Hi VC. <laughs> Hi VC. I'm going to do an update with a difference. Um, this is one that I've been meaning to do for a long time, so I'm just taking the opportunity. Um, I'm, it's an absolutely gloriously sunny evening, and I'm just taking advantage of the last rays of the sun uh, to shoot this video. Uh, now, I'm going to do a video on cassettes. Yes, my music on cassette collection, uh, which um, I mean, when I started buying music, it, I, it was actually on cassette that I started off. Um, so I, I'm going to show you some of the early cassettes, which, I, which I've had over the years, and ones which I've been picking up in recent times, virtually almost all of which I've well, mostly I've bought in charity store trip shops. Uh, some of them I keep in these um, little handy um, containers, which which I also picked up in a charity shop, by the way. Um, I, I suppose I'll start off with, uh, let's open these up. and um, I have a load of them here as well, kind of chaotically strewn on the, um, on the bed here, but... Um, yeah, these ones, uh, these ones are all um, kept inside in uh, these boxes. So I suppose I'll start off with um, one of the earliest cassettes. Well, actually, the earliest cassettes which I bought, I don't actually have on me. Um, when I was in my teens, say circa about ninth, early 90s, um, I was big into thrash metal and... Uh, I have a big collection of them still at home in my parents' house, in my bedroom, in a box. But uh, I don't have them at the moment. So, but uh, this is something which I, this is a cassette which I bought uh, in my early twenties. Um, the Smiths, um, Hat Full of Hollow. Um, now I, I think I bought it around about 1995. Uh, this is a reissue which came out around about 1993 the the album itself came out originally in 1984 but uh, I got this actually second hand so um sorry I could sweat it's very very hot here today um and um it was only 2 years so this was only 2 years old when I bought it but it was already in kind of slightly fairly worn condition um as you can see it's quite the writing is all kind of worn off it but um I also um now that's my own work. I, I was having a cup of coffee. I remember back, back in <laughs> over twenty years ago. And anyway, um, I played this recently. It doesn't play very well. I didn't store it. I didn't kind of keep very good care of it down through the years. But it's um, uh, yeah, I'm hanging on to it for kind of nostalgic reasons. So that's the Smiths, a uh, hat full of hollow. And this is a, this is the reissue on W E A. Um, yeah, it would have come out on Rough Trade originally. Um, some of my other early some album CD or sorry cassettes which I bought brand new. Now this is when I was I, I wasn't actually even buying CDs at this stage. I was it was still all cassettes. Uh, Beck Mellow Gold. Uh, I bought this when I when it came out in nineteen ninety five ninety four ninety five. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think this was, this was a debut album. I bought it purely on the basis of that single, Loser. You know, that's how I found out about him. Like I suppose a lot of people. But uh, yeah, I still have it. I mean, I think the case is broken a bit. But um, yeah, I still have it after all these years. And it still plays perfectly. So that's... Um, I also had his follow-up. Um, uh, is it Od Odelay? on cassette as well but I think that uh, I was sharing a flat with some people and I think one of them must have stolen it uh, it, it disappeared um, other seed, other cassettes which I bought new uh, down the years I'm just trying to figure out this is, sorry this is slightly chaotic here now at the moment um, I bought, yeah, I bought this new as well when it came out. Um, actually, Air, um, Moon Safari. This is probably one of the last cassettes which I ever bought new, I think. Um, well, you know, kind of um, uh, 
it, it, it was kind of you know that last kind of the cassette age I suppose really kind of ground to a halt say round about maybe 2000 late 90s when they pretty much start, stopped issuing cassettes on um, on or sorry issuing albums on cassette it was pretty much a kind of a dying format at that stage so um, I bought this maybe around about 1999 I think maybe yeah I think maybe a year or so after it came actually came out uh, love this album this is an absolute classic um, air moon safari um, I suppose yeah, you're probably all familiar with it huge huge album at the time oh yeah this is another one I bought new as well Chemical Brothers, uh, Dig Your Own Hole. Um, uh, this one's actually got mold. Um, yeah, so uh, I haven't been playing this recently. Um, but yeah, I was quite big into the Chemical Brothers. Um, I kind of... Maybe it's like they've gone off them a bit, I'm, you know. But I was quite, you know, quite into them back in the day. So... Um, uh, back in the 90s, um, when, when I bought that, uh, around about the time it came out, maybe 97, 1997, I think. Um, trying to think what other ones did I buy new back in the day. Um, boom, 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 boom. Sorry, this is extremely. Oh, yeah, this is another one I bought. Bet Orton uh, Trailer Park. And I think I bought this maybe around 1999 or thereabouts. I think this album actually came out, yeah, 96. Uh, it might have been a couple of years after that I bought it. But yeah, this is a classic kind of, how would you describe it? Kind of folk mixed with kind of trip hop kind of um, kind of thing. Yeah, still have it after all these years. Um, and again, I, I bought this new as well. Um, from a, um, uh, I think it must be Virgin. I think Vir Virgin Records had a store here in Cork for many years, which closed a few years ago. I think it was pretty. I think it must have been there where I bought most of these. But um, uh, yes, most. Of, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Now this. This I bought new online. And it's the it's probably the first new cassette music you know cassette album which I bought since that um, Air Moon Safari album back in the late nineties. Uh, this is, I've shown this before. I've gone into this in quite a bit of detail quite a few times actually. Uh, it's a fairly recent release from about two thousand and thirteen. Uh, this was recorded apparently it's a bit, bit mysterious but, uh, but by an artist called gail gimp recorded around about 2000 uh it's this is a kind of dark ambient um industrial experimental but it, this was released on, on a label called soft corridor a belgium label and it's an issue it's a released in an edition of 60 copies i believe uh, so I got this online there a few years ago, around 2013 maybe. So um, yeah, I, I've, I've shown it a few times and I've gone into it in quite quite a bit of detail. So I'm sweating like crazy. It is really really hot today, um, and I don't have air conditioning. We do, we don't generally tend to have air conditioning in Ireland because we don't usually we don't need it. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on probably now to second hand uh, purchases um, over the years I found a lot particularly in recent years I've started picking up cassettes again in um, thrift stroke charity shops um, I've amassed quite a collection you can pick them up really cheaply um, whenever I see something really interesting on a cassette I generally tend to grab it usually they're around about between 50 cents to a euro uh, I'll go through some of those now. Um, okay, these two, I picked up these both at the same time recently. Uh, Brian Ferry and Roxy Music, Street Life, uh, 20 Great Hits. So, pretty much what it says on the tin. This is released on EG. Uh, I think this is a, I don't know when this came out, maybe early 90s. Uh, yeah, so 
goes from the early Roxy music stuff straight through to um, the latter stuff. So yeah, it's a bit, yeah, great little comp. Um, uh, can't go wrong with it. Um, best of um, Brian Ferry and Roxy music. Uh, this yeah, this is a CD single. Um, this is a Jesus and Mary Chain uh, Reverence. Uh, this came out um, blank. Blanco Y Negro on around about 1991, 1992 maybe. So, um, oh yeah, Reverence and Heat is the other single on it. So I uh, don't usually pick up too many CD singles, but um, when I saw this, I just, I just had to uh, had to grab it. Okay, now this is possibly the oldest cassette in my collection, I think. Uh, dating to 1969. Now I actually picked this up for nothing because uh, it was part of a, a vinyl haul which I got in the charity shop and I asked them, they threw this in for free, so um, uh, Leonard Cohen's Songs from the Room for 1969 and uh, this is an original uh, UK um, release a uh, version of pressing you know, what what you call I don't know what you call them, pressings but uh, yeah it's an original UK edition on um, uh, CBS and it, yeah it plays perfectly um, and I got it for nothing um, now this staying with Leonard Cohen uh, this is another um, album of his which I picked up in a charity shop and on another occasion, and this is recent songs, and this is from 1979. Uh, I don't think this is not an original edition. This is a reissue. Um, well, uh, the barcode kind of gives away. This is a reissue, probably from the 80s or maybe the early 90s. Uh, yeah, very decent album again as well. Um, and Leonard Cohen recent songs. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> Pretenders, Pretenders 2 from 81. Um, and original edition again. Um, yeah, I picked this up for 50 cents, I think, in a charity shop. And this, oh you know, yeah, Echo and the Bunnymen. Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen, their self titled album from 87. Uh, not their best album, really. This is, you know, um, their, you know, their, their last great album was Ocean Rain in '84. So this is, uh, yeah, this is an okay album, but uh, you know, it's not. Anyway, it was worth, it was worth picking up. Um, uh, Echo and the Bloody Man. Uh, oh yes, now this is a, this is a nice find. Portishead. Uh, Portishead um, trip off the trip trip hop act from Bristol. Um, this is our debut album, their debut self-titled album from 1994. This is a long, you know, uh, this is a classic, and I'm pretty well acquainted with this. Uh, again, this is I only picked this up fairly recently. I, I have this on CD as well, but uh, this is uh, another charity shop find. Um, very nice pickup indeed. That is Portishead. Um, dub War. Dub Warning. Uh, this, this is a band, I think they're from Wales. This is like, um, as, as the name says, a dub, kind of dub, um, dub punk kind of thing from the 90s, I'm sure. Um, Oh yes, this is one I forgot. This is actually, yeah, this is one I bought back at the, back in the nineties as well. Uh, I didn't buy it new. I bought it second hand. I think I bought it in a second hand record shop. And uh, this is Lou Reed, Berlin, uh, which originally came out in seven, originally came out in nineteen seventy three. I think this is an early eighties uh, reissue on RCA. Uh, I actually was very lucky to see Lou Reed live when he he actually performed this album in its entirety um he he actually toured he did a berlin tour 
uh, which came to Cork in 2008, and I happened to um, saw him live. So, yeah, th this is a really dark um, album, uh, which didn't get a great reception when it came out originally, you know, but um, coming after Transformer. Uh, again, The Lads, The Lads, a uh, classic album which came out in 1990, uh, hit singles on it, There She Goes, uh, yeah, band from Liverpool, um, self-titled, I think this was their only album actually, if I'm not mistaken, uh, again, yeah, and again another charity shop find. Um, where are we now? Oh, this is a bit of a weird one. Um, uh, Jochen Ernest Bernant. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. But this is basically kind of part music, part spoken word. It's a kind of a discourse on uh, Buddhism and music. There's a bit, kind of bits of Jean Coltrane and bits of Bach and bits of kind of Tibetan music in here. Uh, this is, you know, it's from 1983, uh, German release, um, and it's an interesting one, one of the more unusual um, um, ones in the collection. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, this is another interesting one, this is um, Absolution, this is called, it's a compilation featuring Susie and the Banshees, um, the Dams, um, a uh, lot of lot of nineties indie bands. I think this came out in the early nineties, but there's uh yeah, the Pesh the uh, Psychedelic Furs, All About Eve, the Ramones, the Creatures, New Model Army, uh it's called it's called Polydor. Um just gonna go through some oh yeah. This is kind of a <laughs> uh this is one that maybe I think Carm, yeah you might appreciate this one. The Secret Garden, David's Son. Uh, like kind of um, new age guitar music. Uh, yeah, really, I really like this. Um, very relaxing. Um, uh, just solo guitar. Kind of, um, it's on a label called um, New World Cassettes. And it came out in 1984. Um, Nice cover art there as well. Um, just gonna go through some. Um, oh yeah, some um, some classical cassettes, uh, including some choral Christmas music. Just go through them fairly quickly there. And go and. Now, I'll just go through some Irish music. There's a lot of Irish trad music um, in my collection. This is about Sean O'Reilly. Uh, this is um, Keol on Afrin, which is music for mass or music for kind of church services. Sung in Gaelic. Um, on the Gaelin label. And this is from 1971, so this makes it uh, one of the older... Um, cassettes in my collection and <clears throat> I don't know if I can find it now but um, oh yeah this is this is actually by his son uh, Padder O'Reilly uh, this is actually this is kind of similar really kind of similar um, uh, choral um, choral music uh, sung in Gaelic as well and uh, this is also on the same label, Gay Lynn, and this came out in 1987. And this is a fairly recent, um, recent find. Um, this is also on the Gay Lynn label. This is by a composer called Michal O'Sullivan, and this is called Cry of the Mountain. And this is various um, music which he composed to uh, soundtracks to various documentary films. So. Um, it's from 1981. Um, uh, Again, more kind of choral, Irish choral music. Um, 
Monks uh, Nori Nirin and the Monks of Glenstall Abbey. Uh, oh yeah, Planksty. Um, Planksty, famous Irish um, folk act of the 70s. This is a um, this is a compilation album from the 80s. Uh, Arish, this is called, on Polydor. Okay, now I'm going to move on a bit. Um, there's a, a local second-hand rec second record store bookshop here in town uh, where I, off I often pick up vinyl, but um, I also, from time to time, uh, there's quite an interesting cassette collection there. Now, I've picked up quite a few there over the years. Um, all of these are three euros each. Um, I'm going to start off with um, Lee Morgan's Sidewinder. A classic Blue Note album, which originally came out, I think, early 60s. This is an 80s reissue. This is from, I think, 1984. I really like that um, see-through cassette there. Uh, Lee Morgan, the Sidewinder. Um, now, this is another one I bought at the same place. Tangerine Dream, Underwater Sunlight. Uh, this is from... Let's come out one of their later ones from the 80s uh 83 maybe uh, not not 100 percent sure but um yeah underwater sunlight a tangerine dream <coughs> oh yeah and these are two really nice finds <coughs> Craftwork and the man machine i already have this on vinyl but i couldn't resist this um uh, this is i think a reissue maybe from the 80s. This album originally came out in 1978. And again, staying with Kraftwerk, uh, Electric Cafe. Uh, this is the last. This is their last release under the classic lineup. Um, again, really nice little see-through um, cassette there. Uh, this is one of the few Kraftwerk albums that I don't have on vinyl. Uh, incidentally. Um, oh yeah, John Coltrane, The Stardust Session, Volume 1, was it Volume 1 or Volume 2? Oh no, Volume 2, uh, 1976 compilation of some, some of his works which were previously unreleased, I think. It was on Prestige. Uh, this, yeah. <coughs> um, okay. Oh yeah, these were two really interesting recent finds. Um, this is on. This is part of that Street Sounds Electro series, uh, which released quite a lot of these interesting comps in the eighties. Uh, New Africa. Uh, this was new. This came out in nineteen eighty five, and this is like basically um, uh, music. Well, there's, um, there's a couple of tracks by Fela Kuti on here, but it's mostly kind of. Um, new and emerging African acts um, at the time. Uh, Ture Kunda. Um, yeah, some really, really cool little um, compilation there. Um, street Sounds. Yeah, they did Street Sounds. They did a lot of these Street Sound electro comps um, there in the 80s. Oh, yeah, and this, this is another one in the Street Sound series. Uh, this is also from 1980. I think or 86 uh, Street Sounds NY versus LA Beats and these are basically kind of hip hop electro groups from both New York and Los Angeles uh, there's some familiar acts on here like um, Africa Bambata and um, Africa Bambata yeah there's a lot of other acts that I'm not really familiar with but this is a really really love this um, this comp um, <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, I'll return to the charity shop finds, and I'll try and go through them fairly quickly because this, this is running now with 25 minutes. Uh, Betty Blue, uh, the soundtrack, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, fantastic soundtrack to that classic 80s uh, French movie. I uh, had this on CD as well. Oh yeah, this is a really nice find. Um, television Adventure. 
Television's second album from 1978 and their follow up to Marquee Moon. And this is an original 1978 uh, UK edition. And I was very lucky to find this for just one euro. Uh, Polydor, really, really cool. Um, oh, yes. Fleetwood Mac, Rumours. Uh, very f favourite album in the VC. Uh, this is not an original. I think this is probably a reissue from the 80s or late 80s, early 90s, I think. So, uh, uh, oh, yeah. The Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. Um, hypocrisy is the greatest luxury. Classic um, industrial um, hip-hop. Or, I suppose, yeah, it's kind of industrial hip-hop or alternative hip-hop. Which came out, I think, in 1992. Uh, it has that track, um, Television, The Drug of the Nation. Uh, maybe you might know that track. Um, oh, yeah, another... Uh, classic um, Irish folk album. Uh, Paul Brady. Uh, what's this called? Paul Brady. Welcome here, kind stranger. Which came out in 1978. Classic folk album from him. Uh, this is on the um, the Mulligan label. Uh, this actually looks like it was kept out in the sun or something. It's very faded. Uh, the the sleeve, the um, cardboard sleeve. But uh, yeah, great album. Um, where are we now? Oh yes, yes. This was a very nice find the other day. Um, I, I found a, a whole big bunch of seat of cassettes in a charity shop just last week uh, for fifty cent each, and this is the highlight of those finds. Uh, War of the Worlds, Jeff. Uh, War of the World, Jeff Wayne's War of the World. Um, um, yeah, this is an original edition as well, I think. Um. Also had this on CD, uh, but um, very very nice to find um, find it on cassette as well. In both, in two, came in two cassettes. Also in the same place, I found these two finds, Pink Floyd, and um, not my favorite two Pink Floyd albums, of course. Um, um, a momentary lapse of reason and um, the division bell, but still nice finds all the same. Uh, Fifty cent each, definitely, um, or well worth picking up for that. Also, staying with Pink Floyd, um, objects of fantasy, the music of Pink Floyd, David Palmer, and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. These are orchestral versions of um, of uh, Pink Floyd's songs. Uh, <coughs> Oh yeah, I found this a few days ago as well. Donovan, Universal Soldier, Donovan. Basically a kind of a best of, kind of greatest hits kind of a thing of um, Donovan. Duke um, <coughs> Ellington's greatest hits. Uh, this is a kind of an unusual one. It's in a cardboard, little cardboard boxy thing, which looks almost like a cigarette packet. And the cassette comes out the side like that. Um, this is not a fairly old one. I'm sure this is probably from the late 60s or early 70s. Uh, the place perfectly. Um, <coughs> where I'm trying to think what haven't I shown yet? Um, oh yes. Now these are three very nice finds I made. Again, I found that all three of these at the same time in a charity shop a few months back. Three soundtracks. Uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, the 1985 uh, movie. Um, original motion picture soundtrack. And the soundtrack to Interview with a Vampire. Uh, or Interview with the Vampire. Soundtrack by um, music composed by El Elliot Goldenthal. Uh, this movie, I think it's from 94 or thereabouts. And also, the music, the, the uh, soundtrack to Kenneth Branagh's Frankenstein, which came out round about the same time, I think. And this soundtrack is by, um, yeah, Patrick Doyle. 
So yeah, three very nice finds that I made in the, in the same location. Uh, this is something I've shown fairly recently, uh, the Christy Moore Folk Collection. Um, so it's basically three cassettes of his, three cassettes of his, four, of his three, um, J, his three first three solo albums. Um, so uh, yeah, it is, this is a really nice find as well, but something I've gone into quite detail in one in the previous video, so I won't dwell too long on that. And the video <laughs> already gone over the half hour mark. Uh, these are all a bunch of Saudi Arabian bootleg cassettes, which I found in a charity shop. Uh, actually, I don't know that I find them all at the same time, but maybe on a couple of visits, but... Um, yeah, basically this. Um, I, th I think some of these are, yeah, some of these are Saudi and some of them are Indonesian. But they all do these kind of um, these bootlegs with these plastic sleeves. They all have a very distinctive look. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, Thompson original. Have you ever seen that Thompson original? Uh, yeah, they, these are Saudi. They basically have these very basic looking cassettes where they're just um, basically just you know pretty cheaply produced like. Um, but um, some of these can be collectible, you know, depending on who the artist is. Like, but uh, this is Billy Holiday. Um, School through them fairly quickly. Very best of Dusty Springfield. Emmy Lou Harris, and again, again, like these really kind of um, very basic-looking um, blank cassettes. Like, oh yeah, uh, another Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, Astrid Gilberto, uh, um, Bossa Nova, Brazilian Bossa Nova, uh, Jacques Brel, and this one, Quincy Jones, Back in the Block, which is really a pretty bad album, really. Not very good, but uh, yeah, it's still, you know, interesting little pickup. And uh, yeah, they have these really distinctive kind of plastic, um, plastic sleeves. Uh, oh yeah, again, yeah. This moving on. That's Domino. Be my guest. Uh, this is on Sunset Records. Uh, again, this is a fairly old one. I think this is from the early seventies. Um, in the best old compilation. Uh, is there anything I've missed? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm really missing something. Uh, just bear with me. Okay, I think. The Possibly might be this. Um, okay. Right, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's run on quite long enough at this stage. But um, okay. Oh yeah, there's a <laughs> yeah, there's a few more. Sorry, there's a few more. Um, Orion Green. Uh, this doesn't play very well actually. It's a bit wonky. Um, Uh, Bjork debut. Uh, this is another recent um, charity show to find. Uh, so yeah, great album and really nice to have it on. To have it on a uh, cassette. Um, Frank Sinatra, Strangers in the Night, and this is this is from Turkey actually, the um, Turkish um, edition. Uh, as is this. This is also Turkish. Um, fine young cannibals, the the raw and the cooked. Uh, so it's kind of, it's not a bootleg, but it is an official. But it's kind of fairly basic looking, you know. Uh, okay, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, video has run on quite long enough, and I'm absolutely baking hot here. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Anybody who's sat the whole way through, and I'll be back again with the vinyl next time.